Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, September 16th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, look us up at Dwyer70905.substack.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just point out, I understand the public perception with many is that I'm against Anthony Joshua. Right? People will point out correctly that I picked Kubrat Pulev to beat him. That I picked Vladimir Klitschko to beat him. That I thought Andy Ruiz, a last minute replacement, had a chance. In fact, I picked Andy outright for the rematch. Now, let me just say, there have been some really talented heavyweights, really talented heavyweights, who were not loved by the public, did not get the benefit of the doubt from even the boxing establishment. Right, George Foreman. When I was a kid, I'm just telling you, before Tyson, we thought George Foreman was going to dominate the heavyweight division for a long time. Ali was viewed as past his prime. Foreman beats Joe Fraser, who was viewed as a Goliath. Right? Foreman beats Fraser. Then Foreman destroys. That's the word. Kenny Norton, who we thought was tough. Foreman gets the early KO. When Foreman fights Ali, people were seriously worried about whether Ali would come out of that fight without serious injury. Because understand, Ali had had problems with Ken Norton. Ali loses the Fraser fight by a wide margin. Ali hadn't been heavyweight champion for years. For years. Well, in my opinion, and I understand it's a minority view, Foreman loses his title on a quick count. Right? Foreman is up earlier than Tyson Fury is up against Wilder. Fury's up at the uh, Foreman's up at the count of nine. Worse yet, Foreman is looking at his corner. In other words, the referee should have figured out that Foreman's actually alert. He's just taking as much of the count as he could. Needless to say, when Foreman gets up, they take his title. Ali, of course, never gives him a rematch. Can't blame Ali. The rope-a-dope really could only work one time. Ali never gives Foreman a rematch, and then Foreman is in some tough fights. That Ron Lyle fight is a legendary one where Foreman goes down before stopping Ron Lyle. Understand, Foreman and Ron Lyle, in my opinion, are two of the harder punchers in heavyweight history. Then you have the Jimmy Young fight. Understand, the public never fully embraces Foreman. Foreman beats Fraser in the rematch. Many of you, I'm sure, don't even recall Foreman fighting Fraser in the rematch. By the way, he wins the rematch by stoppage. Right? Foreman then loses to Jimmy Young in a fight that was much closer than is recognized. Foreman then leaves the sport but has so much talent that he comes back and eventually wins the heavyweight title. But of course, he then starts getting treated like George Foreman. So that Foreman-Tommy Morrison fight, I would encourage everyone to look at that fight. An argument can be made that Foreman won the fight but was not given the benefit of the doubt. Now Anthony Joshua, unlike Foreman, unlike other champs, is loved. Right? You, the public, love him. Let's go one step further. Of the guys with a legitimate claim for the heavyweight championship, in other words, him and Tyson Fury, right? We'll even throw Deontay Wilder in the mix, although Wilder lost 
the Fury rematch. It's clear that the public loves Joshua the most. Right? Joshua is a guy who has an acute awareness of his public figure position. Right? He's very important to the sport. He's sponsor friendly. Right? He's sponsor friendly. He's always mindful of the fact that kids might be watching him. His message is always unity. He's had ample opportunity to badmouth an opponent, right? To look down on an opponent. He never does, even when he's in these forums before fights where they have him sitting across the table from a Charles Martin, right? A guy who is tough, who is saying tough things about him. Dylan White saying tough things about him. And Joshua always keeps his cool. Joshua always wants to look respectful. Right? Joshua never wants to denigrate anyone. It's as if he understands that after the fight, he's going to run into this person. Right? Joshua's a very easy guy to like. Also, he's British. Lennox Lewis went to the Olympics as a Canadian. We from Jamaica, I was born in Kingston, view Lennox Lewis really as a national treasure. We view him as ours. Well, Anthony Joshua is very British, isn't he? Right? I know he has roots from outside the country, but he's very British. Right? England has had a lot of great fighters historically. But at the heavyweight division, right? Joshua is rare. Well, let me just say, by the way, you know I'm from the other side of the street. I just want to say so. I'm from the other side of the street. I like edgy. I believe talent isn't always politically correct. I believe if the UK was a little bit more self-aware, they would understand that they have a generational talent in the weight class already in Tyson Fury. Right? Yes, Tyson Fury wears Batman suits to press conferences. Okay, fine. Right? Yes, Tyson Fury at times can get a little loud and boisterous. And yes, Tyson Fury wanders off message. Right? He's not going to always talk about unity. If you get up in his face and you challenge him, he's going to challenge you back and stuff like that. But just understand, if you're looking for a corporate spokesman in the heavyweight division, here he is, Anthony Joshua. Let me also say, too, as an old guy who needs to be in the pub with my friends, one of the best things about Joshua is he doesn't come across as a young guy who needs to be in the pub with his mates. <laughs> right? right? Very adult persona. Right? He's not the guy in his early 30s who needs to be with his generation out multiple nights a week. He's not Ricky Hatton. He's not Roberto Duran. This is a different guy who's very dedicated, very disciplined. Also, he has some Derek Jeter in him. If you know the New York Yankee baseball player who's now in the Hall of Fame and who now owns the Florida Marlins, right? Very successful. He's not Derek Jeter. Excuse me. He's like Derek Jeter, right? Derek Jeter is a guy who was a bachelor in Manhattan, New York City where the Yankees are kings, right? And here you had a guy who wore number two as a Yankee. Understand, number one, Billy Martin. Number three is a guy named Babe Ruth, right? But yet, even though occasionally you heard who Derek Jeter was dating, and Derek Jeter was a guy who liked to date models, right? You never really saw Derek Jeter 
out in public with the woman he was dating in any kind of compromising argument. Right? Jeter, for all the celebrity, carried himself with a certain class and grace. Had a certain level of privacy. Anthony Joshua conveys that as well. So now he's in with a real talent. Right? A guy who, like Tyson Fury, is from the other side of the street. Right? Understand, Usyk doesn't come from abundance. I know he's an Olympic gold medal winner. But he fights Maris Breedis in Breedis' backyard. He fights Murat Gassiev in his backyard. He fights Tony Bellew in his backyard. Right? You can tell that Usyk is a guy who has to go on the road for big fights. Right? His Olympic gold medal only makes it so far in his home country, which has had a lot of political turmoil. He has to travel. He has to be the underdog at times. He has to be in things like the World Series of Boxing, some semi-pro outfit that a well-financed Olympic gold medalist like Anthony Joshua would never be in. Right, so we have odd situations where Usyk beat Joe Joyce in this semi-pro league and we're thinking, wow, should we count this? Understand, where Usyk is from has such limited resources that Lomachenko, his countryman, was in that World Series of Boxing. Right, these guys needed money. The state couldn't give it to them. They had to join semi-pro leagues. Right? So understand, Anthony Josh was in a unique position here. Unique. He's the Goliath who's loved. Right? Will Chamberlain famously said, nobody roots for Goliath People root for this one because he's that rare public figure who seems to pull it off effortlessly with a lot of class, right? He's the kind of guy you want visiting the hospital that has cancer patients. Josh was the kind of guy who would appreciate the fact that that's a valuable use of his time, right? That's the kind of guy he is. Now let's talk about how he could deal with Usyk. Now, make no mistake, I feel Usyk beats him. Right? I always try to pick the guy who I feel has the more talent. Right? For me, while I admire guys with great images and stuff like that who are very important to the sport, skills pay the bills. Right? The hype is just hype. I don't believe that Usyk's going to be intimidated in the slightest fighting Joshua in Joshua's backyard. In fact, I think this is the fight Usyk wanted. Right? I view this almost like I view Marvin Hagler crossing the Atlantic to fight Alan Minter. Right? Whatever was going on in Minter's head, Hagler couldn't have cared less. Right? Hagler was from the scarcity side of the street. This was his shot at abundance. The crowd wasn't going to take it away from him. Minter was going to have to deal with his A-game. I assume Usyk's going to bring his. So let's talk about how Anthony Joshua can win this fight. What I'm going to say, I'm not an expert. Look, I'm not an expert. I'm not a trainer. I've never trained a boxer. I'm just telling you what, from watching boxing, I think works, given the skill sets involved. Now let me just say, I want people to go back to the Tony Bellew film against Usyk. Bellew makes a monumental mistake. 
right? Anthony Joshua can't make it. Joshua needs to realize that he enters the ring because he's a good ambassador for the sport. He enters the ring with a two-round advantage. I know the sport's going to claim differently. I understand people are going to say, Dwyer, you're crazy. Now, this is one of those loved fighters who enter the ring with an advantage. The fight's in his backyard, right? Clearly, he's loved. People like the idea of having him as champion. He comes out of central casting, right? Tall, big guy, no body fat, right? Great in interviews. He's going to enter the ring with a two-round advantage. Now, the mistake Bell you makes is Usyk is a notoriously slow starter. So there is a moment in the Bellew fight where Bellew is upset that Usyk is dancing away from him. That Usyk isn't jumping into the pocket. And Bellew then motions to him and says to him, hey, come fight me, basically. Right? He demonstratively tries to let the crowd know and let Usyk know, I'm here for a brawl. Come get me. I'm here. Where are you going? He plays to the crowd. The crowd goes crazy. That's exactly the move Joshua does not want to make. Because, of course, from that point forward in the Bellew fight, Bellew gets spanked. Understand, if you're in the ring with Usyk and he's not engaging with you, and you're a popular fighter who's already the crowd favorite. You're doing well. My first bit of advice to Anthony Joshua is, if Usyk comes in, starts slow, and is outside and is not pushing the action, let him stay there. Right? Understand, player, you are the heavyweight champion. He's here to get your title, right? The default rounds that are slow rounds, not a lot of action, will go to you. Judges are going to think to themselves, well, has this challenger done enough to deserve this round and to move that much closer to winning the heavyweight title? If the answer is no, then you've won the round. If the judges score the round a draw for little action, you're that much closer to defending your title. Right? So if I'm Anthony Joshua, I come in, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to create fast rounds. I'm not channeling Derek Chisora. I'm not running across the ring because that's not who I am. My game's going to fall apart. I could have Ray Arcel and Angelo Dundee and Freddie Roach and Nacho Beristain in my corner. They're not going to be able to change that because I'm 30 years old and I'm hardwired. Right? I'm going to realize I can't pretend to be Derek Chisora. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to get the lay of the land. If Usyk starts slow, I'm going to let him start slow. That plays into my hands. That allows me to keep the crowd that much longer. I'm not going to call Usyk to me. I'm going to let him stay outside if he's crazy enough to stay outside in a title fight where he has to convince the judges he's worthy of my title. So understand, rather than have a Ali, Fraser, round one, where Fraser goes looking for Ali. Revisit that, the first fight. If I'm Joshua, I start in my normal course. Right? I come out, if the other guy is too far away and stuff, hey, the burden's on him to take my title. The burden's not on me to make the fight. So I would just trudge a little bit forward. The optics would always be in my mind. Understand, 
if you're the big guy and you're fighting the smaller guy and you just move a little bit forward, I'm not going to run across the ring. I'm just going to edge a little bit forward. And if the other guy backs up, I'm going to let him back up. Nothing happens in the round. Okay, that's okay. Nothing happens round two. Hey, that's okay. I was up two rounds to none when I entered the ring. Now it's four rounds to none. Understand, too. Keep that trend in mind. If I'm Joshua, I know I'm not a combination puncher. I know I'm fighting a guy who can be. So I don't want to engage him in combinations. Right? I don't. So, knowing that I hit hard and my distinct preference is for a 1-2. Right? In other words, I don't want to go deeper in a combination than the second punch. Right? If I'm Joshua, I'm just a pot shotter here. Right? I'm only going to throw two punches. Joshua can throw a lead left hook. Doesn't need a setup punch. If he's going to throw his right hand, he can just hint at the jab, throw the right hand. Then, if I don't land something big, if I don't land that lead left hook, if I don't land that big right hand, then I'm getting out of there. I'm not sticking around. Understand, Joshua drops Andy Ruiz. Drops him. Right? Excellent left hand. Drops him. Ruiz gets off the canvas. If I'm Joshua and I have a chance to replay the next sequence, I'm not lingering in the pocket with Andy Ruiz who has faster hands than me and who is a combination puncher. No. Ruiz gets up. The next time we're together, I'm just throwing either a lead left hook or a big right hand. Right? If I need to touch him with my left to throw that big right hand, that's what I'll do. Maybe I try a big uppercut. If it misses, then I'm moving out of the pocket. Right? Don't box with a boxer. Let's talk about the punch selection too. Be acutely aware at all times that Usyk's a southpaw. So let's sound dicey here. This is something George Foreman believed. Foreman believes that early in a fight, when you have your wits about you, when you're a hundred percent, fights just started, you want to taste the other guy's power, is how Foreman would put it. Right? Find out what you're dealing with here. How hard does this guy really hit? Well, if I'm Joshua, look, I'm not going to fool around with Usyk's left hand. We saw what it did to Tony Bellew. Right? We saw what it did to Bellew. But what I am going to do in the early round, because understand, I expect Usyk to be on Joshua's left side. Right? Away from Joshua's right hand. If I'm Anthony Joshua, I try to make sure that I stay away from Usyk's left hand. Usyk's a southpaw. Right? If I'm Joshua, I'm moving away from Usyk's left hand. And early in the fight, I might want to get a taste of Usyk's off hand, which is his right hand. Find out what I'm dealing with on that side of Usyk. Right? If it's a punch that doesn't hurt me, that can't hurt me, then I'll know I can take more risks. Right? But I want to taste his power a little bit on his right side. Let's also talk about something else that needs to be thought of. Right? If I'm Joshua, I want to throw punches in such a way that I'm moving away from Usyk's left hand. Right? Now I know to some, when you see a fight and the fighter does this, it looks amateurish. It's actually masterful. It's PhD type stuff. If I'm Joshua, right, I throw the right hand in such a way that it takes me out of the picture. In other words, don't throw the big right hand, pull it back, and then still be in the pocket. 
No, you want to throw few punches, and you want to throw the right hand in such a way that it carries you off the screen. In other words, throw some big shots, right? Just think about the guys facing each other. Throw the right hand so if you miss the right hand, you're way over on Usyk's right side. Just think about the visual. I'm just telling you, the crowd, if you're throwing big right hands, whether they land or not, the crowd's going to feel you're serious. Right? On the telecast to the public, the public's going to feel that you're going for a knockout. Right? You yourself are reading movement on which way Usyk goes, right? Throw the right hand for where you think he'll be. But make sure the follow through on the right hand takes you out of danger. In other words, don't confuse yourself and think that you're going to be in the pocket throwing multiple right hands. No, have it so that again, two punch combinations, you're pot shotting Usyk, right? Pot shotting him, not boxing him. And when you throw big punches, you need to have it in such a way where if you throw the big right hand, it takes you away from Usyk's left hand. Right? I believe that's what Joshua has to do here. Then if Usyk tries to get really deep in the pocket, understand it's very hard to hit Usyk in the head. So you need to duck your head if you can at 6-6. Six, six. You need to find a way to duck your head, get your head out of the way, and throw punches to his body. But again, I don't want Joshua hanging around the pocket long. If I were advising him, I would want him to throw the left hand, right? When you're throwing left hooks, it doesn't have to be all up top. Throw the left hook to the body, then roll away. In other words, the point is, your interactions with Usyk need to be episodic. You can't box with the guy. You're not on his level with the boxing. Right? You can't run over and find the guy and try to pummel him early because stamina is a concern. And that's not your nature. That's Derek Chisora. That's Joe Fraser. That's not you. Right? So this fight, you're open to the slow rounds. If a slow round happens, steal a page out of the Ray Leonard playbook. And in the last 20 seconds, go over there and try to land something big. Try to look active in the last 30 seconds of a round. To steal the round on the judges' scorecards. Right? If Usyk doesn't get started till the third round, great. Then the fight doesn't get started till the third round. Don't think that him being tentative is an invitation for you to be offensive. Right? The goal here is to survive the slow rounds. Don't engage. Tony Bellew, I'm sure if he had an opportunity to fight Usyk again, and Bellew got off to a good start in that fight, Right? When Usyk was outside not fighting Bellew, Bellew should have just been cool with it. Right? Just stayed there and looked at him. Let seconds tick off the clock. Folks, he's, he was in front of a British crowd. Let the round drop by. Let Usyk go to his corner thinking, did I do enough to win that round? Have his corner tell him, hey player, you're you're down a few. You haven't done enough. You haven't thrown enough punches. Then if Usyk tries to come in to throw punches, you want to mostly cover up, throw one or two, move away. Just pivot. You don't have to look like you're running. Just pivot away from Usyk. Have him reaching. Because understand, Joshua can be explosive with the one-two. Right? It's when he gets to 3, 4, and 5 that you end up with situations like the Andy Ruiz situation. 
It's when Joshua has some success. The Klitschko fight. That Joshua then tries to open up. The defense starts to fall apart. Then he gets dropped the very round after he dropped Klitschko. Here, Joshua needs to realize, hey, if I drop, if I drop Usyk, don't go for the stoppage right away. Unless Usyk looks like Prevetkin. Right? If I drop Usyk and Usyk hits the canvas, then gets up like Vladimir Klitschko did. Just register in your mind, this is a 10-8 round. Don't spend the rest of the round like you did in trying to hunt down Vladimir Klitschko by throwing a lot of left hooks. No, 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 no. Just register to yourself, okay, look, this is a 10-8 round. The headline in the paper is going to be, Joshua dropped Usyk. Let the round pass. Get the 10-8. Right? Usyk comes over, tries to throw punches, cover up, move away. Then the next round, when Usyk rushes in, try to throw your 1-2, then pivot and move away, even if you hurt Usyk. Throw a 1-2, pivot, move away, understand at that point, the momentum on the scorecards is all yours. But, Right? You need to realize that you're fighting a guy who has gone the distance multiple times. You're fighting a guy who has dealt with some of the most troublesome people in the heavyweight division. Right, He's beaten Michael Hunter. Different weight class, now Hunter's at heavy. Hunter's difficult. Right, Usyk's beaten Joe Joyce. Arguably the UK's third best heavyweight. Right? Didn't Joyce beat Daniel Dubois? Right? You're dealing with a guy who's gone the distance in some tough fights. Right? Some tough fights. I know your stable mate, Okoli, stopped Gloacki. Okay. Great. Right? I know Gloacki, I believe, goes the distance in a tough fight with Usyk. Okay, fine. Don't buy the hype. Don't have stable mates, and I'm not saying this is happening, but don't have stable mates say, hey, he couldn't be that bad. I took out Gloacki. You could take out this. Look. No, 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 no. Don't go for the stoppage. Let the stoppage develop on its own. You don't even want to encourage action in the fight. If there's a slow round and he's outside, don't go, come on, fight me now. No, 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 no. Don't do a bell you. He's outside, just think to yourself, does this guy think he's going to win the fight in the United Kingdom against me, one of the country's most popular fighters, when I have the belt by staying outside? Don't be the fool who decides, hey, I'm going to follow him and fight his fight. George Foreman could have won the thriller in Manila. Understand, Foreman was the unbeaten champ in that fight. Foreman was the favorite in that fight. I know we keep hearing Ali, Bumbaye, and all this other nonsense. Now that the fight happened in the past, at the time, I can tell you, Foreman was the giant in the ring. When Ali went over to the side of the ropes to rope a dope, you know, had Foreman stayed in the middle of the ring, <laughs> right? had Foreman walked over to Ali and just looked at him, leaning over by the ropes, and just stood there. There's no way Ali would have taken Foreman's title. Ali needed a dance partner. He needed a guy who was going to throw himself out trying to get through Ali's defense. If Usyk does anything remotely resembling a rope a just look at him. Right? You don't even have to try to box. Just look at him. Right? Joshua's a big man. Joshua could even walk over there and just throw some jabs. Preserve your energy. Right? Don't try to overpower the other guy. Unless the opportunity is clearly there and you could do it with a 1-2. Because it's when you get to 3-4-5 in the combination that you get in trouble. That's how I see it. 
Again, I expect Usyk to win the fight. But if I'm Joshua, I'm emphasizing a low-volume fight. A fight where I'm not trying to do too much. Right? I'm not trying to over, you know, find a guy and destroy him. I'm also not trying to throw long combinations. I'm not trying to overexert myself. Right? If I get a knockdown, I'm not going to go in for the kill. Like I tried on Vladimir Klitschko, unless the guy is totally struggling. Right? He should have gone in for the kill against Kubrat Pulev, who at one point so messed up he turns his back to Joshua. Right? Unless Usyk is like that. If Joshua gets a knockdown like he did in the Vladimir Klitschko fight, great. Great. Just move on to the next round. Have the guy get up. Have the guy try to come after you. Okay, fine. Right? Just understand, you're a popular champ. Just think of Manny Pacquiao. Right? You're a popular champ. You understand. You're entering the ring, given the benefit of the doubt by the judges. You're loved. Right? Now you knock down the other guy. It's a 10-8 round. Which fighter's in the hole? Don't put yourself in the hole by trying to follow a boxing master. I believe Joshua could win the fight that way. Right? Of course, Joshua is a gifted puncher. That one, too. I know it sounds like I'm cutting down Joshua's output, but understand, that one, too, has gotten Joshua KOs. Right? Look at the Charles Martin fight. Right? It's when Joshua opens up and actually tries to box with boxers that he gets in trouble. Right? Don't open up against Usyk. Fight a guarded fight. If it's low volume and slow, great. Consider yourself lucky. Right? Throw the Derek Chisora tape out. You're not Derek Chisora. Right? Chisora's diving into the pocket in multiple fights. David Hay, Joseph Parker, the Usyk fight. That's not you. Joshua's a tentative starter. Recognize who you are. If you're more comfortable being tentative, then great. Be comfortable. Be tentative. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I think Joshua would be making a mistake if he thinks he is going to be able to clinch Usyk and stuff like that. Just assume that you're going to have no power over Usyk when he's outside the pocket. Understand, lumbering forward, just moving slowly forward, is really more for the visual and for the fans than it is for effectiveness. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.